This video will introduce the Levy Jennings control chart, which is used as an application for the measures of central tendency and dispersion. Let's now discuss the normal distribution, because since earlier we've been discussing dispersion, so this is how the values are spread out, mainly compared to the mean. But when we say normal distribution, which is also known as the Gaussian distribution, this describes how the values are distributed. It gives a bell-shaped curve, a symmetric distribution. So this means that the Gaussian distribution gives a picture of how the values are distributed. Because earlier, we were just seeing them as numbers. But now we will be able to picture them as how they would appear close to the mean. Normal distribution would have values clustered around the central peak. That's why it gives a bell-shaped curve because there are more values in the center, so it gives a higher distribution. With the normal distribution, the mean is equal to the median and the median is equal to the mode. That means all these three central tendencies are equal with each other. So this is just to show the bell-shaped curve. So as you can see in the center, so the, in the center is where the mean is and as we've mentioned earlier, uh, there should be more values in the mean area or in the center value so that there would be a curve para tataas siya from low values and then there would be a peak in the middle where the means are and it would go back down again. So that is why there is a bell-shaped curve and that is the normal distribution. But the values that we have in the laboratory are not always perfect. They are not always normally distributed, so they do not always give a bell-shaped curve. For example, the first picture is um, described as a negative skewness. Why? Because it is skewed to the left. That means there are a lot more data located on the left side. So parang kumalat siya sa left side and we call that as left skewed. The middle picture gives a positive skewness so there this is right skewed so that means there are more data spread to the right and sometimes it can give a jumbled value where you may not see where the mean is so this is when the mean median and mode may not correlate with each other so this is another picture showing um, the curve so the first picture shows a left skewed curve, which means that there are data scattered on the left, yung mga kumalat sa left side, na wala dapat dyan. So when we have the left skewed curve, it means that the mean is less than the median and the median is less than the mode. On the right side, we have the right skewed or the positive skewedness. So this means that there are values on the right side that are scattered and when there is a right skewed curve, it means that the mean is more than the median and more than the mode. Don't worry, this is fairly easy to memorize. So you just have to memorize the arrangement of mean, median, and mode. It doesn't change. For left skewed, it's called negative skewed. So we use the less than sign. So mean less than median less than mode. And then for the right skewed, it is positive skewedness, so we use the more than sign. So mean is more than the median and more than the mode. So this is the normal distribution. This is the Gaussian curve that our results should be giving. So when we have this perfect curve, this means that the mean is equal to the median and the median is equal to the mode. So these three measures of central tendency are all in the middle. A normal perfect curve represents asymmetry about the center. So that means 50% of the values are less than the mean and then 50% of the values are greater than the mean. Now this is what we want to achieve with our quality control. Dapat madami yung nasa gitna and then 50% lower than the gitna and 50% higher than the gitna. This would mean that our results are in control. So let's now try to create our very own Gaussian curve. So let's use the values that we had earlier, the ones that we have used for the variance and the standard deviation. We have 5, 10, 15, and 20. The mean that we have computed earlier is 12.5 and the SD is 
6.5. When we create a Gaussian curve, that is all we need, the SD and the mean. So first, we have to place the mean at the center because as we've mentioned, it is the central measurement of a central tendency, so it should be the one in the middle. So our mean is 12.5. Next, what will we do with the standard deviation? Now, the standard deviation would give a standard interval from the mean. That's why it was computed as such in relation to the mean. Remember, standard deviation would show how the values are dispersed from the mean. So what do we do is, for the first um, interval, we put one standard deviation. So how do we get one standard deviation? We add the standard deviation of 6.45 to the mean of 12.45 and we will have an answer of 18.95. So that is our first interval. Next, let's make the second interval. So we will now add the second SD. So to compute for 2 SD, we have the mean of 12.5 plus 6.5 and another 6.5 because we need two standard deviations to have an equal interval from each. We will now have 25.4 as the positive 2SD. And lastly, let's compute for another one for 3SD. So we just add three standard deviations to the mean and that will give us 31.85. What about the left side? So the right side shows the 50% greater than the mean. So on the left side now, we have to show the 50% lesser than the mean. So from the 12.5, we get the negative 1 SD. So that means we subtract 1 SD from the mean. So 12.5 minus 6.5, we will have 6.05. And then the next interval, we have the negative 2 SD. So that means that we will subtract two standard deviations from the mean. So that's 0.4, negative 0.4. And the negative 3SD, we will subtract three standard deviations from the mean. So our result is negative 6.85. So now we have the values that we need at the bottom. Next, we need to do is to input the values that we have generated in the laboratory. So for example, we have our first value, which is 5. We place it near the 6.05 in, in between negative 0.4 and uh, 6.05 because that's where our value is. We also put 10 here near in between 6.5 and 12.5. 15 is in between these two numbers and 20 is in between these two numbers. But if we look at this just like this, it does not really form a bell, bell curve because we only have four values. But what do we want? We want to have this bell curve with all our values. So that means most of our values should be in the center, should be in between 6.05 and 18.95 so that the bell would form. That means that there's a lot of values in this range in the middle to form a bell curve. We have an empirical rule for the normal distribution. What does this mean? This means that there is a rule of thumb in all normal distributions. The first rule is that about 68% of all our data values should fall within the positive negative one standard deviation from the mean. So dapat 68% of the value nandito, which makes sense because we've said earlier that the bulk of our data results should be in the middle. So that's 68% of the data should be found within this range. The next rule is that 95% of the data values should fall in between the positive negative two standard deviation. So that's 95% of the data. And the last rule is that about 99.7% of all the data values should fall within the positive negative three standard deviations. So that means only 0.3% of our data should fall outside the positive negative three standard deviation. So the quality control chart that we will be learning next would be the Levy Jennings control chart which was introduced by Stanley Levy and Elmer Jennings. Now, this is the most important control chart in the quality control. 
of the laboratory. Why? Because it is able to detect all kinds of analytical errors. The Lelaby Jennings control chart is supported by the WestGuard rules. The Levy Jennings control plot is also known as the Schuert plot. This is the most common presentation in QC. It shows QC results sequentially even over time and it allows a quick visual assessment of method performance. Let's go back first to the Gaussian curve. So we have discussed this earlier with the mean in the middle plus on the right side we have the positive 1 sd positive 2 sd positive 3 sd and on the left side would be the negative 1 sd negative 2 sd and negative 3 sd and it also shows that um, in average there should be 68 percent in 1 sd and then 95 percent in 2 sd and 99 percent in 3 sd now as we've mentioned we use this to see if our values are in the middle if they are part of the 68 percent but when we use it like this it's very difficult to plot all our values because when we test for for specimens or for controls we have a lot of values that we have to input and using this chart as it is would prove difficult to plot our values To make plotting easier is that we flip the Gaussian curve so that we now have this grid line that we can use as a template for our values or for our data so the mean value or the target value would be located in this line and then the standard deviation lines will now uh, be the imprecision value for example, these are our data that we have taken from quality control. So we plot them against the chart. And then when we connect all these data together, we now have what we call as the Levy Jennings chart. So this is how the standard deviation, the mean, the variance, and our data will be interpreted. And that is the introduction for the Levy Jennings chart, a quality control chart used in the laboratory. Watch the other video discussing the West Guard rules that uses the Levy Jennings chart. Thank you for watching.